Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena episode 18 for Friday, October 24th, 2014. Faux Lollipop. Hello and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. Lollipop, or Android 5.0, is nearing its official release, though developer preview builds are out there for folks with the Nexus 5, Nexus 7 devices. I've been running the latest developer preview on my Nexus 5, and I have to say there is so much to look forward to. I'm loving it. Uh, battery saver mode to extend battery life when you're running low. There's lock screen notifications, smart lock uh, for only asking for a pin to unlock your device when you aren't near a trusted device. There's, of course, freshly designed system-level apps following the new material design spec, and really just design in general with the whole system sporting a fresh, new, brighter look and filled with animations and visual splashes that don't slow everything down. Honestly, Lollipop is a huge step forward for Android, and I can't wait for you to get your hands on it. But the reality, unfortunately, is that many device manufacturers will take their time pushing out an update to your device. These updates sometimes take months, which leaves you stranded with a device that yearns for the next version of Android. Now, you could root your device and flash a community-supported system image, or ROM, as it's known by all the cool kids, on your device to get you there faster, but that takes a certain level of geekitude that I'm not going to go into today. A quicker shortcut won't get Lollipop installed on your device necessarily, but it will make your device seem more like Lollipop in a number of ways. And that is what today's episode is all about. Today, we're going to set out on a mission to transform your pre-Lollipop device into a faux Lollipop device, thanks to a number of apps that replicate both the style and function of the next version of Android. Without further ado, let's get started with Project Faux Lollipop. Now, first things first, your launcher needs to look the part. Now, granted, there's only so much we have control over without root access on your device, and I'm keeping this episode free of that nerdy requirement to include as many people as I can in this transformation. So, changing the device level buttons that perform the home, back, and multitasking functions isn't really doable, meaning instead of seeing the lollipop-styled shapes, you're stuck with the standard buttons. For the other things though, let's take a look at Nova Launcher, an app that I've used literally for years as my replacement launcher. Nova offers an overwhelming number of customization options, which is its strength, especially for the purposes of this exercise. Nova is meant to be a launcher replacement that sticks relatively close to stock, but offers the ability to tweak everything from the home screen to dock layout to the app drawer, as well as a number of other visual tweaks gesture commands, and powerful backup features that make it easy to try new things and easily bounce back to your favorite layouts. And Nova has a number of preset tweaks that are tailor-made to echo some of the design and action from Lollipop. Some of these actually released this week, so let's put it all to use. First, before we head to settings, on your home screen, long press the app drawer icon and then hit edit. Then tap the image and swipe to the left. We'll change that to the solid white background version that is present in Lollipop. Now go to the folder settings and turn folder preview to line. Next set the folder transition animation to circle if it isn't already. Now go to desktop settings and set the persistent search bar to the Lollipop style. Also, you want to make sure that the scroll indicator is set to the dots with the larger dot in the center and set the scroll effect to none. Now go to the drawer settings and set the transition animation to circle and the scroll effect to none. Now you could set the background color to white for your drawer, though it doesn't exactly match Lollipop's app drawer style perfectly, so that's entirely up to you. Now go to look and feel and set the app animation to slide up, set scroll speed and animation speed to stock, 
And finally, you can either apply one of Nova's stock icon themes called Lollipop to skin some of the system level app icons to better match their Lollipop counterparts. Or you can do what I prefer by downloading the Moonshine icon pack that updates not only system apps, but literally hundreds of popular apps with a flatter Lollipop inspired icon that really makes things pop. And finally, install the Material Wallpapers Android L app in the Play Store and choose from a wide range of authentic version L wallpapers for your background, pulled from Lollipop. And right there, we have something that immediately feels just a bit more L. Nova Launcher is free with a paid version that offers the full range of functionality at $4. You can also find the Moonshine Icon Pack for free and finally, Material Wallpaper's Android L is also free in the Play Store. That ought to get you started. Okay, so now we'll change your dialer to something just a bit more lollipop. The app is called X Dialer, and it's a dialer replacement that includes a theming engine so you can load any number of specialized themes to skin your dialer and people picker capabilities. Before we get to our lollipop transformation, Xdialer has been translated into more than 30 languages thanks to the community support on XDA forums. The design is intuitive, that's thanks to its minimalistic approach. You have your dialing pad, of course, as well as this button that takes you to all the people in your impressive Rolodex, if I do say so myself. Down the right side of the screen is your quick scroll to any letter in the alphabet, and tapping in to anyone's entry shows you their contact details along with this pane that can be swiped up to show your call history. Everything you see can be tweaked in the settings to your heart's content. Appearance settings tweaks things like dial pad size, color sorted calls to differentiate different types of calls, to the ability to set a time during which a new theme can automatically be applied. Also, behavior settings determine what happens when you receive a call, or tap on a contact, or automatically importing any phone number currently stored in your clipboard. So yes, a total dialer replacement, but it's the theming engine that makes it perfect for today's exercise. With Xdialer installed, now you can search the Play Store for Xdialer Material Theme. Apply that theme and immediately you'll see the Lollipop inspired dialer, complete with fancy transition animations, bright blue and white colors, and a whole lot of circular icons. Sure, it's not a perfect match, but it gets you closer than before. And besides, X-Dialer is a pretty powerful replacement for your dialer anyways. So find X-Dialer for free for seven days. There's also an unlocked version for $3.99. Just look in the Play Store for X-Dialer material theme to complete the transformation, and that is free. Now, finally, one really cool function of Lollipop is its enhanced notification approach. When a notification comes through that's deemed important, you'll actually see that notification appear over the top of your screen on whatever it is you're doing, out of the way of most of the action of your device. Heads Up Notifications is an app, now open source, that brings this floating pop-up notification to pre-Lollipop devices. Setting up Heads Up Notifications is very simple. Just launch the app and first activate notification access for the app so notifications will pass through the app as needed. And right off the top, hitting that preview button will show you what it can do. Going into settings, you can then change the style by applying any number of themes, though it does default to Android 5.0 L light, which best approximates what you'll see on Lollipop. I boosted the font size up to around 150% to try and get it a bit closer to the source size. Deactivate compact mode to let the full notification shine through. And in behavior settings, set display time to 10 seconds. And even that might be too long, but it's better than the default 15 seconds, which felt too sticky to me. And in filtering settings, you can tweak the notification priority settings to taste. Do you really need to get a pop-up notification for every single thing that passes through or just really important things like missed calls or important emails? For an easy enhancement that screams lollipop, check out Heads Up Notifications for free in the Play Store. Now, that was but three ways to make your device look and feel like Lollipop. And honestly, there's more to be done. I won't go too deep into the specifics here, but if you want to take things further, here's a few more things you can do. First, you remember that battery saver mode I mentioned earlier? 
you can install an app called Agent Do Not Disturb. And there you can activate the battery option. You set a trigger point for something like 15%. And now whenever your phone hits 15% battery remaining, Agent will do exactly what Lollipop does by disabling auto sync and non-critical operations as well as dimming the screen uh, during use and turning Bluetooth off all in an effort to eke out a few more hours from that precious battery. Uh, then there's Lollipop Smart Unlock that disables your smart uh, your security pin around familiar devices of your choosing. Right now, I actually do this on Lollipop with uh, with Lollipop and my Moto 360, which is kind of the trigger point. You can do this right now on pre Lollipop devices with an app called Delayed Lock, and actually, you have more flexibility than what Lollipop offers because instead of just pairing your device via Bluetooth or NFC with Delayed Lock. You can also set up trusted Wi-Fi access points uh, as well as locations based on cellular tower proximity. There's even a time range during which the pin can be disabled. Now, I'm sure I've you know missed something in this project. So if you know of an app that replicates some of Lollipop's functionality, send me an email at arena at twit.tv. I'll throw it into my list for a future episode. All right, but that's not all, ladies and gents. Up next... I take a look at a new app to hit the Play Store that actually tackles yet another piece of the lollipop pie. Hmm, lollipop pie. That's this week's Hot to Trot. Notifications on your lock screen. Wait a minute, didn't I already do an episode on that? Oh, right, episode eight. I'm sure you watched that, right? Well, a new take on lock screen notifications released a few weeks back by the developer of another app we have featured on the show before, Unclouded. This new app is called NotaWidget Notifications, and it fits this week's theme because, yes, using the app, you can take those notifications and drop them right onto your lock screen, similar to what is the default in Lollipop. This is done as a lock screen widget, so you'll need to activate that in your settings to make it work. Just drop it into its own widget slot and filter through the settings. You can enable the clock if you want the time to share space with your notifications. Of course, there are plenty of ways to tweak the visual layout from tweaking the size of the clock to its color to whether you want the notifications to be short and sweet or totally expanded. Of course, you can exclude apps if you don't want a particular app to litter your notification layout on your lock screen. Swipe left and you get a preview of the layout before saving it. Very handy. And now, what do you know? Notifications on your lock screen that at the very least resemble what Lollipop has to offer. It doesn't look exactly the same, but it's functional. And Nota Widget Notifications also has a widget if you want to drop your notifications onto your home screen. So it's not just isolated to your lock screen. Still trying to figure out why I might want to do that, but hey, we all have different ideas of how we want our devices to work. So there you go. The app is called Nota Widget Notifications and can be found for $1.26 in the Play Store. Okay, so now your phone might not be exactly like Lollipop, of course, but it's closer than it was before. Uh, but really, who are we kidding? Let's collectively cross our fingers and hope that you get an official update to Lollipop as soon as possible because, yeah. It's awesome. I hope you've enjoyed today's project. I always love hearing from you guys. Please send me your favorite app picks, your categories, whatever you have to arena at twit.tv to be considered uh, for the show. I consider them all and I definitely read through there and add them to my handy list uh, for future episodes. There's also a subreddit at androidapparena.reddit.com. I often post categories there asking you to add your favorite apps or vote your favorite apps in those lists up so that I know uh, what's the most popular apps out there. All of it helps me for future episodes, so go check that out. There's a Google Plus community that's easy to find by searching for Android App Arena. I also host a live viewing party of each week's episode on Fridays at 1 p.m. Pacific at live.twit.tv, and I'd love to see you here in chat. I'll also be on set to answer any questions you might have about Android apps or the platform in general. And if you missed the live taping, well, each week's episode uh, will always appear later that evening on the site and in the feeds, which you can find by visiting twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena.